Hello, Edward. Ooh, here we go. You appear to have grown some. Hey, compliment. That's good. What makes you think you can show up like this? There's nothing left for you here anymore. What possessed you to burn down my home? We did it as a symbol of our resolve. No, you didn't. You were hiding the memory. You didn't want to be reminded of what you've done, and thought you could erase the memory by destroying the evidence. You're wrong. This it guy's good. It's like a child who hides the sheets after he wets the bed. You ran away, and you know it. Daddy's home. <laughs> what the hell? Look at Ed's face. Look at that. He knows. The fact that they haven't seen each other in so long means Ed will probably revert exactly to the state of his relationship at the time his father left. Meaning, like, young child. Seems like father has his number. <laughs> A little bit. He's exactly like I was when I was his age. Exactly. Episode 20, Father Before the Grave. Interesting. Wow. Did Ed run away? I feel like in a way it's the reverse of that problem. He didn't try to escape what happened, he dove into it. But the burning of the house probably was more than just resolve, right? It's like trying to turn a corner, trying to purify things with flame. But it seems like Ed's father also did some running away of his own. It's very clear that they're father and son. Even without knowing much about father, you can tell he's super driven and he has a purpose. Like he didn't leave for no reason, that's clear. And I'm guessing it's related to very similar things that Ed is after. Every time I see Ed asleep, I think it's Winry because of the beautiful hair. Gotta stroke the beautiful hair, no? Okay. You haven't changed in the slightest all these years. And you look exactly the same. I'm paranoid. I'm so paranoid in this show. I swear to God. He's sipping that juice. I'm thinking of greed. Greed juice. Was it greed wine? Is that what it was? Is that a hint? I'm seeing, I'm seeing numbers everywhere. I'm going nuts here. Where have you been all this time? Why didn't you come back sooner? Trisha was waiting for you until the very end. He must have had a good reason. At least in his mind. The life form my son's transmuted. Did you notice the eye color? Or the hair color? Huh? What are you trying to get at? Are you telling me that that wasn't even Trisha? For all that those boys sacrificed, you're saying that thing they created wasn't even their mother? So then what was it? You don't sleep or eat? You don't even run out of breath? Uh-huh. I just have to make sure the seal doesn't get harmed. That's so cool. So you really are immortal then, huh? Not exactly. Barry mentioned something, and it made me realize that any type of body is incompatible with a foreign soul. Pairing them together, the body will eventually reject it. <laughs> it could happen tomorrow, or ten years from now, but it's inevitable that it will. Oh no! Al, we've got to get you back in your regular body! And that's not the only thing either. Even if that wasn't the case, we've seen how fragile the seals are. Barry's human form gave him a little scrape and that was it. Couldn't you just transfer your soul into some other object? Because if that's the case, then for the time being, well, you're impervious to pain and you don't have to eat! It sounds like a great deal to me. No, it isn't! Everyone makes that mistake. You don't know what you're talking about! Winry's speaking for Ed a little bit here. Winry? I'm coming in. You know, you and brother always gotta be the first to explode. I never get the chance to be the one to get mad. Exactly. Al's always picking up the pieces. I guess I can't fall asleep. I don't think this body will let me. Oh. Just tell me you're gonna get your body back. People don't give Al any time to like have emotions because everyone else is always so emotional around him. He just doesn't have the space for it. I'm sure there's a lot of things Al needs to get out that he's just not able to. Part of that is because he's so cool and he actually has like a very good mindset about things. But also part of it is his responsibility to others, you know? Like where Ed is looking out to try to fix things towards alchemy and towards the bodies and things like that. Al is looking in his immediate environment to fix things and hold things up. You know, the intentions are good. They love Al, but I feel like it's a little bit unfair to him. You know, they're always like being emotional on his behalf. The only time Al gets any moments like that is like when he's having a deep existential crisis. <laughs> my brother his body back he's the only family i have i won't let you take it take it do you even know what you're saying you're the one who tossed his body aside and put him in that armor aren't you alchemist it's true you and i are exactly the same no accept it edward stop we make 
monsters. Why I gotta bring this up again? Is this a dream? Why did you leave me here like this? Yeah. Well, that was fun. Something terrible is going to happen in this country soon. You should escape while you can. Whoa. This country's lousy with terrible things. And I can't leave. I've got other people who need me here in case they want to come home. Try not to be such a stranger, all right? So their father's just out there in the world I could, Pinocchio. doing stuff. It's too bad I won't get to enjoy your cooking anymore. What is he talking about? And Ed didn't say goodbye. You're not really gonna dig it up, are you, Ed? My God. Ed, don't push yourself. I'm not gonna be able to move forward until I know for sure. Besides, you ran away. I won't run away from this. Ed taking everything to heart. This is one of the most morbid things I've ever seen. Granny, Mom's hair was a light chestnut color. This is black. What? So who was it? And this pelvis? Pretty sure it's male. It what does it mean? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid this isn't your mother, Ed. <laughs> it really is impossible to bring the dead back to life. From the moment I made this thing, it's been the symbol of my despair. But not anymore. Al can be returned to normal. So who could it be? Who do they almost resurrect? Black hair, huh? What does that mean Al can be returned to normal? What's the connection between that not being their mother and Al being able to be returned? So they tried to bring back their mother. And what they got was a random corpse, it seems. And what they lost was Ed's arm and Al's body. Something about the fact that it wasn't their mother changes the way they were thinking about Al losing his body. And I think there's one hint, I don't know what it means exactly, but I remember that in Al's flashback of the truth, we saw through his eyes and he had a black hand outstretched like it was his mother's hand or something like that. I'm tempted to say that this body is some, some version of Al's body, except for the hair thing. I don't know. Shout out to Pinaco for being there for Ed this time. What about it, Ed? The thing is, what Al and I transmuted, it wasn't actually our mother. What is this, Ed? What are you trying to tell me? I'm sorry to ask you this, but the child you transmuted? Are you sure that it was your child that you brought back? <laughs> Please don't dig it up. Thank you, Ed. It's good to know my son and his wife helped people. I'm proud of them. What's wrong with me? I can't believe I forgot to give him the message. Message? I need him to know. I couldn't keep my promise. I died before he did, and I'm so sorry. Heading back to Central already, are you? Yeah. Al's probably mad at me. I'm gonna have plenty of explaining to do. Good, it feels weird having them separated for so long, even though it's only been a couple episodes. I'm sorry, brother. You... What? How are you this beat up? A lot happened. You missed the whole Roy thing. Seriously? How did this happen to you? <sighs> Quite the story. I'm gonna have to extend what little you have left of your armor. Does that mean his armor is weaker now? Found out that the thing we buried wasn't really our mother. <sighs> who was it? That's the big question. Then what happened to me? That's just it. This has actually convinced me we can return you to normal. <gasps> Ed, are you sure? Yeah. But before I start explaining how... Well, uh, Winry, do, um, uh... Do you remember when Al and I got in a fight when we were kids about who'd marry you? <laughs> the fight we were talking about on the roof? Yeah, that one. Al told me you turned him down. Mm-hmm. Turned you both down. Ooh. Ouch. She said... I, I just, just don't, don't like men who are shorter than me. <laughs> Ouch. You can't judge a man for something you can't help! Uh, <laughs> I don't really see how this has anything to do with getting Al's body back. 
So now that we know you remembered something real, then we also know for a fact that really is Al bonded in there. Right. If I was able to pull that much of you out, then I've got a hunch that your body's still in there and I can pull it out. Try to think back. Can you remember what happened when the truth unraveled you? He saw something really weird, I remember that. He saw a strange perspective. Brother, after the this portal, was it. Yeah. I remember looking at you from inside that thing. Right. That thing was you? I guess so. But my soul didn't bind. It must have rejected me right away. So that means we didn't harm anyone else's soul after all. So Al's definitely connected to this, but the black hair thing is throwing me off. So many mysteries. It's hard to unravel this. You're onto something, aren't you? Yes. I've come to the conclusion that death is permanent. So not even transmutation can change that fact. All this time, I thought that I must have missed something. But it was impossible to do in the first place. Ed. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm glad that they're internalizing this in a good way. I guess I can see why. Like, the thought of almost bringing back a loved one and seeing them in that state is awful. But there are still a lot of mysteries about what exactly is happening. I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling here. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. But I think now, actually, maybe the rule about not being able to bring people back from the dead makes more sense. This is kind of fuzzy for me, but I think it's related to something that's come up a bunch in this watch, which is that sometimes elements coming together create something that's greater than the sum of its parts. And I feel like there are aspects of us that that applies to. Like we have physical bodies and those are a result of multiple elements and compounds and material things. But consciousness is something that's sort of hard to quantify. This is an old philosophical problem. Even if you understood every single material component of the human body and DNA and the brain, you still would not understand exactly what consciousness is. The most it seems like you can get is like a correlation. Like when you have a certain thought, a certain part of your brain lights up or shows activity. But understanding that there is a connection does not necessarily explain consciousness. And so it's like, could you actually build it? Could you build a material consciousness? And just my gut, I have no evidence for this at all, but just a gut feeling, we're not giving the complications of consciousness enough credit. You know, there's all this talk about building AI. My personal projection, just if I have to guess into the future, is that it's going to be way more difficult than people think, and we're not anywhere close to having AI that functions like a human being. There's clearly a connection between the brain and consciousness and the mind, right? And it might be that the brain accounts for the entire mind. That being said, it's very difficult, maybe impossible, to draw a map of the mind and, and a map of consciousness based purely on physical states of the brain. Bringing this into alchemy, alchemy seems mostly related to physical properties. And then there's something outside of that, which in this show I think they would refer to as the soul. And so death, it seems, is more than just a material death, it's also a soul death. And it doesn't seem like alchemy or like a material transformation would be sufficient to do that. And that might have something to do with why it's a rule and why bringing back the mother and the baby didn't work. So what did teacher have to say? Same result. Well, I'm not really sure why, but she said, Thank you. This entire time, I've been blaming myself for what happened. Thanks, brother. Thank you. I wasn't the one who killed mom after all. I feel like I've been brought back to life. Our child wasn't made to suffer twice because of me. Right. That makes sense. I'm gonna make you normal again. Brother, I was right there with you, and I knew that there were risks. So quit trying to shoulder all of this on your own. I can't watch you suffer like this. Not on your own. Yeah. I've met other people who weren't exactly human, but they still managed to live their lives with a purpose. And even in this body, it hasn't stopped other people from treating me like I'm still human. This body could reject me any time, but it's the same with being human. You never know when you might get sick or die in an accident. But now, I can't take it anymore. I can't take all the nights by myself. It's too lonely, and that's why I have to get back to normal. Sure. We'll knock that truth jerk on his butt! Yeah! That's weird. Have his shoulders always been so broad? <laughs> what a beautiful scene. Man, my heart goes out to Al. I'm glad he actually got to have an emotional moment where somebody was there for him. Al deserves a moment to vent, and I think Ed handled that really well by using it as a chance to unite them back towards their common purpose. And poor Al, like... 
his lonely nights, that must be tough. The kid's been so strong for so long, I'm, I'm happy he had that outlet. I also like what Al said about being human. It's true that there are no guarantees about anything, anyone's lives. In many ways, it seems like Ed is in just as much danger as Al is, if not more. One thing we know for sure about the show, anything can happen to anybody at any time. But I like his expression of that, because to me it felt like gratitude. You know, it felt like even though he's having problems and even though he does want his body back, he is appreciative of, of what he has, and I think that's one of Al's greatest strengths. I feel like he's like Winry in that way. One thing they have in common is they're both always looking at the present moment and what they have now and trying to preserve and protect that while certain other characters are always looking ahead. There are still risks for them in this. You know, Ed's talking about going up against the truth. Good luck with that. And there's so much else going on in their world and the villains and all that stuff. The feeling is nice. It feels like unity. I kind of wanted Winry to join in on their little walk down the hallway just for solidarity. I think that would have been cool. But instead, it led to that nice moment of her observing Ed standing up straighter. I feel like they've processed a lot of really great stuff here. They've sort of been able to forgive themselves a little bit in that realization that they they didn't do what they thought they did. It wasn't quite as bad, it seems. And they gave their teacher a huge gift. So it feels like a reuniting, a reuniting of purpose. And also a reuniting of them since they've been separated. It's really cool. It was a really wonderful scene. Oh, that's the end of the episode. <laughs> Alright, well, I already kind of summarized my thoughts on it. Very character-heavy episode. Really fun. But also a lot of questions raised. One is the question of what exactly went down with the transmutation. And the second is, what is his father warning them about? About the danger coming to the country. Is it things we already know, or is there some other element to it that we don't know yet? And what is the promise? What is the promise between their father and mother? Every time you think you found the floor, the show opens up and you fall through the cracks again. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a hopeless mess. <laughs> I'm on edge waiting to see how things play out. And we're only a third through the series, so there's a lot that can happen still. But anyway, that's the end of episode 20. Very packed episode. I'll see you guys very soon for episode 21.